We're past the era where you could just pay any random influencer and go viral overnight. A lot of people did that for years and it worked because the climate was different and most of them were actually gambling. They didn't know what they were doing. But if you actually know what you're doing, the times are still sweet. No, you can't pay influencers in the way you did before. Things aren't as cheap. But in this video, I'm going to break down the influencer PR and social media strategy that you could be using today to still create big moments and impact culture. I'm Brandman Sean. I'm co-founder of Contra Brand Agency, a music marketing agency that's helped indie artists go from zero to millions of streams. We've had number one hits, worked with major labels. And when it comes to influencer marketing and social media PR, we've sparked campaigns that have generated over 5 billion views organically. That's no exaggeration. And in this video, I'm gonna break down how you should be looking at social media today and some tricks and tools that we use along the way. Before I get into the deep, deep tips and tricks, the first thing that you need to understand that makes a huge difference between people who go viral consistently and people who just happen to go viral every once in a while is understanding the difference between culture and viral. A lot of people think it's the same thing, but it's not. And when you understand this difference, you can look at two pieces of content and know that they can go viral, but you'll say, nah, that's a bad piece of content, period, because it's not gonna have an impact versus this is the one that's gonna make an impact for me as an artist, even if it does half of the views of the other one because it will control the brand, the perception of me with that particular audience and help input me into the conversation. These are the important, important things to decipher. And people have some huge mistakes they make in this conversation. I'll touch on that at the end of the video, how you really understand marketing and culture and how they intertwine for your campaigns. So stay for the end and I'm just gonna kinda like talk and break down the biggest mishaps people do there. But this goes into my first tip for when you're working campaigns and how you can leverage an understanding of culture for your particular audience, most important part, all right. So for example, there's an artist that's an R&B artist. And in breaking this artist song that now has well over 500 million streams, the team used specific cultural figures to be able to bring visibility to the song. How did they do that? In this particular example, all right, there's an R&B artist. So you can imagine love is somewhere in the topic, right? Now, if they had to pay the influencers or the celebrity figures in this particular case, it'll probably be 10, 20, 30 grand. And these are the type of people you probably can't get to post to another song just like that, at least without a relationship, right? That's the particular case that we're dealing with. So you know what they did instead? They actually found some videos of that couple together they put their song in the background and got that shared in the social sphere, right? Instead of paying an influencer and then having that influencer just post, right? Skipping that step completely, which we've done that type of thing multiple times before as well, and then posting it. But the key is, in this case, that couple was a relevant couple that was going to be paid attention to on the pages that they got that particular couple posted. So you have to think about that. What does this audience on this page care about? Are there any celebrity figures or people that you can relate yourself to? Are there any memes or any particular jokes that you could input your music and put it in front of that audience in a way that's already digestible to them? And it doesn't always look like you got to pay somebody directly. So let that sit in. That's a big part of tip number one and something that works a lot these days, but you really have to understand culture and that audience's culture and the pages cultures that exist, not do I like the song or what I think is cool, right? That's what most people get in their own head in terms of like a lot of marketers, especially they think what they ma think matters. Just like a lot of artists kind of think that what they think matters. Of course, your, your opinion matters, especially when we talk about the music. But, but when we're talking about the marketing campaigns and how it's going to connect, it's more about the core audience itself. And now the next thing is using influencers as models. It is a highly underrated thing. And I've been pushing it for at least two years now. You don't always have to get a viral post from an influencer. You can get the look that you want. You can get the action that's desired from the perfect person, right? And you can get it for cheap and then make sure it gets visibility. Their page algorithmically might not be set up to take off, but if you get the right video in the right place, it'll take off, right? You can A&R that in the same way you might construct music and put different producers together. We've literally taken pages that have had like 5,000 followers on TikTok, had that person post and then posted that somewhere else because it was so perfect for the song, all right? And then things take off. We'll pay somebody $50 and then get it posted somewhere else because we know that that person was going to be able to execute it. And because they were cheap, we were going to be able to get them to try more times. Uh, they had a little less cockiness about them, right? They were newer to the process. These little things, right, are meaningful hacks because you have to remember when Nike pays people to be in their commercials outside of like the NBA endorsements and things like that. They have plenty of just regular people in their commercials. Most brands just have regular people in their commercials because they reflect the idea that they want to put out there. 
And that's the same way that you can think about it yourself. Focus on the creative, focus on the idea and find somebody who can execute it the best. All right, now the next thing is be mindful of the actual locations of the influencers that you are working with. People are all over the world these days, right? The globalization has allowed us to be able to get to other countries and get our music streaming worldwide pretty quickly, pretty easily for a low cost. But when it comes to working campaigns, it can be really weird because you could be paying some influencers over in Russia or Australia or anywhere, right? And then not know that they are where they are. And then you're wondering why you're not getting a certain level of overlap. So we like to target specific locations when possible. This isn't every single campaign, but when possible, especially when we know an artist is trying to work on building a certain market, a certain area, then that becomes way more relevant. Now I'll walk through a couple of scenarios, but there's a tool that we use. It's called Breaker. And you guys can let me know as I walk through some of these tools, if y'all know some tools that are similar, but this is literally the only music specific influencer platform that I know. So that's what we use. The only other platform we know like this that's kind of focus on music costs like 400 600 dollars subscription a month which means nah we ain't doing that all right we know some labels some major labels that use it i can't remember remember the name but breaker is available to any artist they weren't before but they are now which is the only reason that i'm mentioning it in this particular video if there's like any particular link or something i can provide i'll put it in the description below but i think it'll just be going to the home page let's get to why i'm showing you and this should be free by the way i think there's just a limit on how much you can do on certain profiles but check this out this is what we do in terms of location all right you can actually literally just type in, let's say California, all right, California, United States, bam. Now, the thing is, you're going to have to still like whittle these influencers down because there's just so many other things you can filter to. And there's like 655,000 people with prices ranging from 20 to 80, uh, $20 to 8,500. And the default's always like high to low, which is like, I'm not going to get on these pages. I'm not about to DM with Khalifa. And you can make people offers through this platform and stuff, by the way. Um, but like, yeah, use filtering to find what's relevant to you. But the location is a big thing. And I'll say this in a few different ways. Uh, one way we use location data is if we want an overlap within a marketplace, we want to target a whole bunch of influencers or try to get as close as we can into our particular genre within a specific market. Like, hey, we want to tackle New York to make it appear more like, hey, things are blowing up in this area. So one thing that allowed a lot of our campaigns to really take off is because we basically took an ads approach in many cases strategically with influencers, meaning we're targeting specific demographics, areas and spaces versus just paying a bunch of people online. Um, we were doing that before we started using this platform for a couple years. But then when we found this platform, it just made it easier. We also use location for things like, hey, the artist is going on tour. And while they're on these tour stops, are there any influencers in that city that we can hit up to pop out to the show and bring some extra attention? Now, when it comes to Breaker, we can't get super granular in all markets always. Like maybe there's an obscure city in the middle of America or something like that that we can't get to. That's fine. We use it as a su supplementary tool, at least, because we were doing this stuff all super manual before. And sometimes some cities you might miss or it just might be too difficult and not worth going that deep. And there's actually a couple of case studies of Breaker being used for exactly that and helping blow up some artists that are pretty significant now. But when they were an opener, they started to get just as many people coming out for them as the primary act using this strategy. Fun fact, this is something that we aided for 24K Golden early on as well, back in the end of like 2019, I think. And here's another strategy that we use that's similar to the location overlap except for it's literally just the following overlap. And this is the holy grail. So there might be a way that you can like truly do this from a comparison way and pick exactly the influencers you want to look like on Breaker, but I don't know um, how to do that yet. But as you can see, I went to this random profile. I chose NASA, <laughs> by the way, their Instagram profile. All right, and it's cool. You can see all this great data on influencers. We can get back to something like that. But the important part that I'm trying to get to strategy wise is the profile lookalikes. So you see, these are some other space companies or pages. So I guess it makes sense, right? There is some some like profile lookalike. Now, what we uh, have done like early on is try to figure out what is an overlap in your audience. Because if I have two influencers, right, one could have a million and another one has a million. But if they are showing my stuff to a, a million different people, then it doesn't really hit the same. But what if I just get that person who has a million, but then I find somebody who has 100,000, 200,000, right? 50,000, but they have at least a 40 to 70% overlap in their audiences. Well, that hits completely different. Now I know it's being seen over and over again. That's why I say we think about it like ads. And what we do manually um, back in the day, we don't get at this granular as much um, anymore. Like we have the campaign has to really, 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 really like be necessary to do that for. But 
we will literally just go through people's followers and, and go through and see and get a sense of who's following them and try to give like our best guesstimate. So it seems like profile lookalikes is doing a little bit of that for you, but there's, you know, it's not like it's showing a thousand different profiles that are, that have that overlap, but it's a useful thing to have at least a couple of profiles that you can see. And on my end, I just wanted to make sure I communicated that strategy. Now, beyond that, Here's the big hack when it comes to influencers and getting influencers for cheap. Who does the influencer that you're talking to or trying to get at actually impact? So what y'all don't know possibly is there's people out here in the world that have a lot of impact, but they don't have a big name. For instance, there might be a stylist in the music industry that has a lot of stars who are aware of their stuff because they work with all these different stars. But if you're not in the professional side, you wouldn't necessarily notice, right? Or it might be a lawyer. It could be a manager. It could just be a, a, somebody who's a dancer for a bunch of different artists, right? But either way it goes, they're on these people's radar. So if you get these people to post, you can make these other people aware who might have some level of influence of a magnitude more than the person that you're actually paying. And you'll be more likely to trigger, right? The influencer ladder as it continues to go up with different people. People, different celebrity effects and this doesn't have to be like the typical celebrity this could just be i'm paying the home girl who or the little sister of an influencer who is even bigger and has even more influence in the space that i'm trying to reach we've paid the little sisters the little brothers right and sometimes you know little brother might be 25 but the point is you know they're related they're they're in that vicinity and that then creates a chain of effect where the other person that you want to get to post posts for free right it's like man it's on their radar they post it for free or at least now they're aware of the artist or the song and what more can you ask that can go down to somebody who only has five thousand followers ten thousand followers so that's something to be aware of and i want to show you uh, breaker does this to a degree as well um let me see and i don't know there might be even like a paid profile where you can unlock more of this if not hey they should definitely do this because i would love to pay for this well i wouldn't love to pay it i would love it for free of course but like i would pay for it all right so we check these insights of Manny Wells, for instance, an artist that we've worked with before. We've had an interview with him on this channel. Dope content. Y'all should check out our interview with Manny. These are notable followers of Manny, right? Notable followers that they're showing of Manny on his profile. Now, he's an artist and these people are following him. If you go to Manny's Instagram profile, if I go to his followers, what does it say? Only Manny can see all followers. So not only is it only not going to let me see all of them, right? As I try to scroll through, you might get lucky and say, oh, that person has a verification um, or that person's relevant, but it's not prioritized to do that. So even if you're not seeing every follower that Manny has, Breaker is making an effort to show notable followers. But this is just me doing it with him specifically imagine if you're doing that with certain influencers as well just doing a small little check like let's see this influencer might have some other people on the radar and that's also a good way to measure some level of cultural cachet so for example yes i can post let's just pretend manny was just a regular influencer he's not an artist because he's an, he's an artist in this case but i was analyzing his profile as an influencer i would think two things one ooh, okay i see scissor is following him now tiwa sandwich uh, i mean a bunch of people right now, I see these people are following him. If I get him to post, these people might see it. Ooh, that's cool. But also, there's another thing. I mentioned this earlier. What if I just get Manny's post that gets posted and then also share it in other spaces within, let's say, the culture or other pages that a SZA or uh, Tiwa Savage or Tim's or any of these other people are following? So that gives me more chances and it is at least showing me that there's some level of credibility with him, all right? as an influencer that I could leverage because when they see him, they'll be more likely to at least pay attention for a second or they'll look at him doing it as some level of support, right? Whether it's just his song playing in the background of it, they'll also just notice that a little bit more or visibly he actually is posting and doing some kind of silly clip, which funny enough, we might, you know, take a little credit for SZA following Manny. I don't know, like Manny, you would have to let us know, but you know, a good minute ago, right? When we worked a particular campaign for Manny, we chose these influencers. I'll like put the post up on the page, we'll put it up. And we got these influencers that SZA loves. It's the exact effect, the exact effect. SZA loves these influencers apparently, right? And we got them to post to Manny's song. And SZA ends up sharing it on her story, right? Because she loved the couple and Manny's song happened to be the song that was playing to the couple, right? And she just, so she loved to post everything about it, right? So now she goes down to Discovery, bunny hole, no, wormhole is probably what I meant to say. You get the point. And then that's another point of contact with Manny. So even if it wasn't 
her first contact with Manny and she knew about him already. It would just be another con contact. That's how we're thinking about these campaigns. Like when we really lock in, it's hard to do this for every single artist, for every single campaign or every single song that an artist dropped and go that deep. But if you are an artist yourself, if you collect these people over time because it's specific to you, who matters to the people that I'm trying to get out to? Who matters to the pages that I'm trying to get out to? Or if you're a manager, if you're a label, it's very, very, very achievable to really start to get these comprehensive details and collect these people. So you do it for one song, you do it for another song. And after, you know, four or five months, a year, you have a comprehensive list of people who are relevant to your space and who's connected to them. And and Breaker, by the way, you can actually like save, you know, influencers and have your own list. So if you don't like doing the Excel spreadsheet or the Google Sheet game, which we do mostly in that particular category, you know, here's an easy way to do it as well. I'll mention a couple more things about Breaker while I have it open, but then I'm going to transition to some other things that you got to understand when it comes to influencers and making an impact today and beyond when, when it requires people to truly understand the culture. All right. So one engagement rate is really cool. I do like that you can um like search through engagement rate and, and here's a secret now we didn't go take it anywhere near this far but in 2020 we built an internal agency tool that did a few of these things that breaker does my biggest goal that inspired is i was really really trying to get into the overlap right i wanted to be able to consistently say who has a 30 percent 40 percent 60 percent overlap 10 percent overlap and it's like i only pay influencers within that because the way i see it in breaker hey, if y'all could go really deep in this category i would love it right is I can go up the ladder. I could just pay a bunch of 50,000 um, follower influencers and 100,000 follower influencers who have overlaps as I work my way up the ladder and not worry about going too big at certain periods of time until until it matters. Because the problem that got created in t with TikTok, especially, which is when I thought of it was because I didn't know where any of these people are, how they related or anything like that. And then the last thing that you could do through Breaker, but is relevant regardless, is back to locations. I meant to say this earlier, foreign countries. A lot of y'all are running ads and getting things going in foreign countries and you have no idea how to continue to build on the ground that you made and that's the issue with a lot of people's international campaigns so if you don't ever take that next step to say okay i'm making a lot of like cheap streams go off in germany and i'm even starting to hit the algorithm on spotify and stuff like that but you don't ever take it to the next level to get yourself within culture right where you're starting to see who the influencers are in that space starting to pay some of the like publications and things in that space like their version of igpr whatever the blogs are popping over there then at some point why are you doing this i guess you could just do it just to trigger the algorithm and leave it at that but if you aren't really trying to build something that you can capitalize on and have an image to break yourself as an artist as well you're only going to keep running running ads forever all right paying for every single view and every single stream unless you know you hit the lottery and trigger the algorithm on spotify which we could do we could do another, another video on that Ooh, last thing because i thought this was the coolest thing in the world and breaker was the only place that i personally knew that can do this and it's been helping me like crazy it's a cultural thing so let me find this check this out when i go to this woman's bio i see a flag right i can copy this flag and i can go in breaker put search by bio all right and then find the puerto rican flag i believe that's a puerto rican flag all right now you see pop up a bunch of people who have that flag in their bio all right. So that says something culturally. When we talk about culture and getting into cultural conversation, it's a small hack. You might be looking for Christians and people who specifically say, hey, I'm a Christian in my, my bio and they stand on it in that way. This is just a quick way to find people who are identifying. It doesn't mean that obviously there's not a relevant influencer who doesn't have the flag in their bio of whatever culture you're trying to get out to or doesn't have any words that allude to what you're trying to get out to but it does say something right to be able to find those people and to easily rally around those particular things and know that these are people who are willing to stand on whatever you might have topically that matches that particular conversation and i've gotten legitimate impact when i use that type of filter to run a campaign and get into certain conversations quickly now one thing that I want to just end with, because I said I would touch on this a little bit at the end, was that culture versus viral conversation. A lot of marketers get in their way. And artists, you become marketers when you get into this conversation. Managers, you become marketers when you get into this conversation. And marketers, y'all are just marketers, right? They get in their own way because they think that their opinion matters the most when it's about the core audience. And a lot of times, you might think, hey, I like this song, I like this artist, and think just because you have ideas, your ideas are equivalent to somebody else's idea or a different type of idea because they just look like two cool pieces of content. But somebody who's in tune with that culture knows, know that other idea that you got, get that out the way. No, both of those are cool pieces of content, but this is what works in that particular conversation. This is the idea that's relevant to that audience that's going to spark it and make the other 
parts of the world in their audience actually care about it. For instance, I think Billie Eilish is an extremely talented artist, right? And she has some music that I'm like, oh yeah, that's a good song. I like that song, but I'm not Billie Eilish's core audience, right? So if I just do something that I think is cool without her audience in consideration, chances are is if it got activated, that song or that activation actually wouldn't go far enough to ever get to me in the first place because it's that core that matters the most that activates everything else, right? So a lot of artists get, I mean, a lot of marketers get in their own way by thinking their opinions matter uh, when they don't, which is a thing that you have to really understand. Like just because you don't get it doesn't mean that it's not going to work, right? And you have to learn how to support visions that aren't necessarily yours. So sometimes we'll just listen to the artist and say, okay, that's what it is. I need to completely get rid of my thoughts and learn how to support yours and why this works. Why this works? Not, I'm just gonna do this creative idea because the artist thinks this is cool, but like, no, I'm gonna really understand why this works in the first place, why they are saying I should do this. And then I can now absorb that information in the future to apply to future campaigns with them. Or maybe I'm working with another artist that has a similar demographic. And now I understand the language within that part of the culture. I'd go way deeper in that, but like, just leave it there for now. This is how you approach campaigns, influencers, and social media from here and beyond when it comes to culture. And as long as you can understand culture and these ways to navigate it on social, then there's never gonna be a time where you can't go viral. You don't need TikTok to be on the up and up, or you don't need a new feature to come out just for you to be able to have some type of viral moment or a cultural impactful moment, because there's always conversations that are going viral in the culture, whatever your culture is, all right? There's always a conversation, there's always a meme. Culture is always moving. The apps are always at different phases, but culture will push virality in and of itself. So always stay tuned in, stay tapped in. And if you have any other thoughts or tools that might help this particular concept of conversation, let us know. And as I said, I'll put like a link to Breaker in the description below. It's not like an affiliate link or anything. So I'll just figure out the best page to send you to. Share this video with somebody you know it will help.